Welcome back, everyone. Another week of Taurus Talk here at SG Taurus. I'm your host, Matt LePan. Once again, joined this week by the corporate training manager at April Air, Mark Marquillo. Mark, we enjoyed having you so much last time we had to have you back. Welcome back to Taurus Talk. Hey, Matt, it's good to be back. Thanks for asking me again. Last time you were on, we talked dehumidification. Today, we're continuing our talk on humidity control, but we're changing it up a little bit talking about how relative humidity affects viruses. That's two things kind of intersecting here that are very important in day-to-day life, your home comfort and viruses. We all know we've been fighting with viruses over the past year plus, and we're going to give some information today on how viruses interact with humidity within your home. Mark, just getting started here, Why is it so important for folks, you know, before we get into the virus stuff, why is it so important for folks to understand relative humidity, especially dealers to understand it, to keep homes comfortable? Well, relative humidity, uh, let's just sort of give a textbook definition. It's the amount of moisture in the air as compared to how much the air can hold at any given temperature. And that changes, for example, warm air can hold a lot of moisture and cold air can't hold a lot of moisture. So really by controlling the humidity, the absolute humidity levels in the home, you can significantly up, well, you can affect things like coronavirus and other viruses. You know, Matt, let's face it for 60 years, people have been dealing with all sorts of, you know, pet danders and cleaning and viruses and uh, environmental pollutants and dust mite feces. And let's face it, a new furnace or air conditioner doesn't fix one of those things. The real way to address particularly viruses, I think that's what our topic is going to be, is to control the humidity levels, the absolute humidity levels in the home. When you talk about viruses and how they're affected by humidity, obviously every virus is affected a little differently, but you and I had a conversation on this off the air. Viruses hate when you hit a certain level of humidification. Can you go into a little bit of how having the proper humidity can affect a virus? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not an epidemiologist. I'm not a doctor. I don't even play one on TV. But <laughs> if, if you think about it, what I've learned about, let's just take the coronavirus. And there's a number of, you know, coronaviruses. The COVID-19, it's really not a living virus. I know what people think. It's actually a DNA molecule. And it's actually surrounded by a lipid layer of fat. That's what kind of keeps it alive and keeps it moving. It has something to feed off of. But what happens is when that virus is entered into the atmosphere, like say out of your mouth and into the space of the room, if the room is really dry, that virus tends to dry out rather quickly and becomes very, very, very light. And because it's very small and very light, it can stay floating around for sometimes almost 40 hours. Now, if you think about it, if the room is humid, and the water molecules, it's a very dense situation where that virus is released into, it actually slows the virus down. The molecule actually attracts some of the moisture and it becomes heavy. And a heavy virus will actually sink to the ground. You know, gravity is our friend here. And the more humidity we can put in the air, we slow the transmission rate down so that it doesn't have a lot of inertia. And then gravity can take over and pull the virus to the ground where it doesn't do any damage. So like you said, Matt, viruses love 20% RH. They also like 80% RH. What they really don't like is 50% RH, which is exactly what a dehumidifier and a humidifier can do in somebody's home. The viruses don't like 50%, but humans do, right? This is 50% is great. If you can get there in somebody's home, they are going to be very comfortable and they're Heating and air conditioning system is going to run a lot more efficiently if you get to fifty percent, correct? Yeah, you know, fifty percent. Now, this you know, I'm gonna. A lot of this data is not just my data. This is from you know the EPA, the American Lung Association, Berkeley Laboratories, the American Medical Association, CDC. I can go on and on and on. They all say that fifty percent is the best relative humidity for our immune system. That's the sort of the sweet spot for us, but it's sort of the death knell for things like coronavirus. Achieving 50% RH is something that as HVAC contractors, you can take this information, tell folks you want to be at 50%, here's how we're going to do it, and here's what's going to do to the virus. What is that here's how we're going to do it in your mind using April Air products? 
Well, you know, a lot of contractors will say that an air conditioner can do that. Because if you think about it in the summertime, an air conditioner is basically a dehumidifier as well. The problem is about 80% of the BTUs used in an air conditioner are used to change temperature. About 20% of the BTUs are used to remove moisture. And if you could actually change the RH before the air conditioner has to do it, i.e. with a dehumidifier, which I call stage one of air conditioning, and get that house to 50% with the dehumidifier, my goodness, you go almost to 100% sensible load on that coil. The air conditioner works better. It uses less electricity, and it's not having to remove moisture in the home. So quite honestly, I I don't think you can get a house to 50% RH or 49% RH with an air conditioner unless it's a, you know, 12 ton units sit on somebody's living room. So it really adds a lot of benefits to the air conditioner while you're trying to solve the health aspects for the people in the home. When you eventually get to 50%, you either dehumidify the space if you need to, or humidify the space if you need to, depending on the season, especially up here in New England, you know, in the summer, you're definitely not going to need a humidifier. We're going to have plenty of that. And in the winter, you're probably not going to need to dehumidify too much because it's pretty dry. Once you get them there, what are the benefits that folks are going to see in terms of the transmission of viruses or the transmission of any type of of airborne particle? Matt, I'm going to quote a source that I use a lot when I do trainings. It's the American Society for Microbiology. What they basically say is at 20% RH in a home and 80% RH in a home, the viability of the virus is two to four days at, at any temperature. However, if the RH drops to 50%, and this is quote, this is from their site, it says, humidification of air to 50% RH reduces the viable virus to less than 1% in two days and significantly decreases the infection risk. And guys, that's what we're all talking about. We're not talking about killing the coronavirus. We're talking about the risk of infection. If we can mitigate the infection, we slow things down. I tell contractors to never say, if you put a dehumidifier in, it's going to kill the coronavirus. That's not true. What it's going to do is it's going to seriously hamper the ability for that virus virus to get inside of us and do all sorts of horrible things. That's what humidity control does. It's a great way to think about it. And and like you said, we're not doctors here. We're not saying this is going to end COVID-19. We're not saying that when you have 50 or 49% RH that COVID-19 can never be transmitted in the space. It's going to greatly hamper it. It's a no-brainer to make sure that you are at the proper humidity levels because you're just increasing your ability to stay healthy more or less when you're knocking down these viruses in that humidity controlled environment. Yeah. You know, I was talking to one guy and he's a comfort advisor and he's super smart. And he had a quote from the American Medical Association. He tells his customers that 95% of all human illnesses enter through their nose or their mouth or their eyes. Now think about that. If I can make the environment humid enough to where the virus particle is heavier than the air, gravity pulls it to the ground, which is away from my nose and my mouth and my eyes. So coronavirus isn't a problem if it's on your carpet where you're standing. It's a problem if it gets inside your body. So by in, by getting the humidity to 50%, which is the perfect number, we slow the transmission rate down. And that's what this is all about. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. And that's what humidity control does. You had said this off the air, but essentially if, if you shot something through a bowl of jello, It's going to slow down, slow down, slow down, eventually start dipping down. That's why you're talking about spacing. You know, the CDC was talking about the amount of space between folks. Because if if this humidity catches it and drags it down, well, you're giving enough space to get through that jello and start dipping towards the ground. Exactly. It's about the velocity. You know, when you cough, I mean, millions of these things just start to fly out there. Think of it this way. If you were to shoot a gun or shoot an arrow or something through super dry air, it goes for a really, really, really long time because there's nothing in the air to slow down the velocity. However, if you did the same thing on a super humid day or a rainy day and you 
shot a gun or an arrow, it would slow down really quickly and gravity would take over and pull the virus to the ground. So that's really all we're trying to do is we're trying to put stuff in the way of the virus to stop it from moving. Once it stops moving, gravity is our friend. Gravity pulls it to the ground. And that's why they tell us to stand six feet apart. Give gravity a chance. Well, you can do that in your home by simply just changing the relative humidity. There are videos out there of simulations that show when someone coughs or sneezes. And, and from my point of view, don't don't look at those because the next time you cough, someone coughs in your home, you're going to start spraying down every surface again. But you can see in there, there are these models that show in a dry environment how far the spread is. Or in a, a human environment, how widespread it can be. But in that perfect humidity, it's going to go and it's going to fall quick enough so that, like Mark is talking about here, and like all of these scientists are saying, you know, trust science here. They're saying that the velocity is not going to be strong enough to beat that humidity level and it's going to drag to the ground. Stay away from entering your body in your mouth, eyes, or nose. Matt, you're totally right. You know, I wish I could remember where I saw it. I think it was on YouTube. There was a, a cough. They showed somebody coughing and the viruses just fly all over the place. And then imagine this one. The guy coughs underwater. Nothing happens. It just stops right there. Boom, goes straight down. That's what we're trying to do by controlling the humidity in our home. And look, this is never going to go away. Homeowners are way, way smarter than they used to be. I mean, people understand. I mean, think about this. I was just goofing around the other day and I went on to Google and I typed in, how do I get coronavirus out of my house? 8.7 billion sites mm -hmm. came up in less than one second. I typed in coronavirus, 3 billion sites. And just for giggles, you guys, I typed in air conditioner and furnace. There's like 116 million sites. You guys, those are the two things people buy because they have to, because there's broke, let's be honest. The other stuff is what people want to buy. So like I was telling Matt earlier, you know, once the CDC said early last year to put a room humidifier in your home, you couldn't find one on eBay. You couldn't find one on Amazon. You couldn't find one on walmart.com. Millions and millions of people were buying humidifiers. So instead of sending your potential customer base to getting an Avengers humidifier to put in the corner of their room. Let's push them towards putting a, an April air humidifier or dehumidifier into their system and into their home and making sure that you can control that humidity and get to that 50, 49% RH, try to get there with top of the line equipment and make sure you are keeping your customers safe and keeping your customers happy. Yeah, Matt, you make a good point. It's not just in their home. Here's something that a lot of guys don't think about. If I can control the humidity in a home, my immune system is much, much healthier. My cilia, my immune system, my nasal passages, my mucous membranes are all great so that when I do leave the house and I have to go to the grocery store, I have to go to a gas station, I'm probably protected more than anybody else because I'm in a healthy environment. So it protects me even when I'm outside of the home. A lot of people don't think about that. Absolutely. And, and, you know, really we, what we're saying here is if you can get homes, whether you're the dealer or you're a homeowner listening, if you can get a home to 50%, 49% RH through humidification, dehumidification, it will make your heating and air conditioning system more efficient. It will make your immune system more efficient and it will help slow the spread of viruses such as COVID-19 or the coronavirus. April Air products, as you all know, we've talked to Mark, we've talked to Kevin Durkin, our regional guy. April Air products are absolutely terrific at doing this. And it's something that easily goes into your systems. They're going to do the best work and they're going to make for the happiest homeowners. And you just have more and more opportunity if you have these happy, healthy customers. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really, you know, I talk to contractors all the time. And in our industry, you guys, if you're not unique or somehow different 
than the other contractor, you better be cheap. I'm serious because homeowners, if you just, if you talk the same and you say the same thing and you do the same thing, the homeowner is just going to go right to price because you're really no different than anybody else. But if system to you as a heating and cooling contractor means heating and cooling, you're missing the boat because a system is heating, cooling, fresh air, humidity control, and air filtration. A healthy air system is five components. Now, it's not 2018 anymore. A system to a homeowner, again, I'll repeat it, is heating, cooling, fresh air ventilation, humidity control, and air filtration. That's the system moving from 2021 forward. Guys, it's the new normal. If you choose not to go that way, that's your business decision. But homeowners are going to leave you in the lurch. They really are. They become so smart and so aware of their surroundings and so aware of everything. Like you said, go on Google. People are searching for more information now than ever before. One, because it's easier. Two, it's more accessible. Three, they're scared. They're trying to figure out what's going on and how to protect themselves and their family. You are going to get more educated homeowners, and Mark, you said it perfectly. If you're not different, you better be cheap, because if you're not different and you're just saying, I'm going to come in, I'm going to put in uh, an air conditioner, a furnace, and a coil, and I'm going to redo your ductwork and get on out of here. Okay, well, you're not the cheapest. All right, bye. You're not getting that job. You're just not. Yeah, I mean, if, if you look different, you sound different, you talk differently. I mean, I know contractors that have, you know, a good, better, best heating and cooling package. But once that's sold, they say, now we also have the COVID upgrade. Well, what's that? Well, this is our COVID package. This goes on top of the heating and cooling system. I mean, who says, no, I don't want the COVID upgrade. I mean, just talk to them because if you leave it at good, better, best, you know, different types of air conditioners and furnaces, and you don't talk about the other stuff, you're missing the boat. You really are. Because like Matt said, people are, look, this thing may be over or it may be, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, the the coronavirus, it's the end. I'm not even saying it's the beginning of the end, but it's probably the end of the beginning until what the next one. If people understand, if I were a contractor, I would not, I would talk about being proactive to the next problem that hits the country. I mean, heck, we need to prepare our customers for the next potential virus problem. I think it's a great way to put it. Be proactive, get a fresh air system in, get healthy air into people's homes, and you'll have happy, healthy customers for years to come. Yeah, it's funny. I met this one contractor. You know, we all use the phrase, uh, the EPA says that the air outside our home is 100 times better than the air inside our home. We all say that. Well, how about we just bring the fresh air into our home and say Mm -hmm. the air in our home is the same as the air outside. I mean, boom, drop the mic. That really is the answer. We even use the phrase, I'm going to step outside and get a breath of fresh air. Well, if you say that, there's a problem in your house. So if you control the humidity, you control some fresh air and you filter the air and you have a nice heating and cooling system, you just solve the problem. That's a system, you guys. It is. And get that breath of fresh air, bring it on into the home and make sure that the humidity is correct. Because as we've discussed here, relative humidity and viruses go hand in hand. You get the right mix. The viruses are going to start to go down in terms of their risk of transmission That's everything we want to do. The best thing you can do is keep yourself safe, keep your family safe, and get ahead of the game. I did a homeowner survey a little while back, and all that the homeowner said to me, she said, Mark, tell the heating and cooling guys this. By not quoting us and not informing us on products that you don't think that we're going to buy, you're only hurting both of us. She said, just give us the chance to say no. Look, not everybody can afford it. Not everybody's going to buy it, but everybody can say yes or no. If you just give people the chance to say no, watch what happens to the trajectory of your business. Oh my goodness. It's going to take off. There's just so much great information here from Mark on the relative humidity, offering these humidity control products and offering the full system, fresh air, healthy air systems to your customers. And like Mark said, See where your business goes. Well, we want to thank Mark for coming on, giving some of this amazing information. And we want to thank all of you out there for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, pretty much anywhere you can find a podcast, you can find us. Just search Taurus Talk. Follow along on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. 
use the hashtag Torstock and catch all of our podcasts right on our website, sgtours.com backslash podcasts. One thank you again for tuning in. We'll see you next week on Torstock.